The calling this morning, I wanted to share some thoughts that I have had um, concerning Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. It says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. When we come to the Lord, uh, we come in humility, knowing that the things that we once loved are, we, it's like we come with ashes. These things that we once prized and treasured, because we've seen Jesus, these things have been, it's like they've been reduced down to ashes, something that's worthless. There, but there was a time when we loved those things. But a day came when all of this changed in us. There was a change that happened. Well, what happened that changed that perspective? This change gave us a love for eternal things. And it gave us a hatred for anything that's evil, corruptible, and passing away. How were our eyes open to see things new, anew? When something that was living is sacrificed in the fire, it is reduced to ashes. Well, a sacrifice occurred. It was Jesus Christ. The blood that he spilt is so much more precious than anything this world can offer. When When you look at the world from the perspective of that sacrifice, the whole world is reduced to ashes. Salvation is the lifelong process by which that which is corruptible and that which cannot enter into glory is burned up in us in the refiner's fire. All that will be lost in the end is only those things that would have hindered us anyway, those things that would have prevented us from entering into heaven. In Numbers 19, we learn of a sacrifice that was to be a burnt offering. It was a sacrifice intended to provide purification for sin. The animal sacrificed had to be a red heifer. It it was a specific animal to be sacrificed. And it had to be carried out in a particular manner. This was very specific. Numbers 19.2 says, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So this is an animal that would have been set aside from the beginning, from the beginning of its life. It would have been prepared and set aside every every day that it was alive was a day spent in preparation for what it would be used for later. The priest was to bring this heifer to a place outside the camp. Then a clean person, and this was very important, you'll hear this over and over in this account, that a clean person had to be the one doing this. They were to slay the heifer before the priest. The blood would be sprinkled on the tabernacle. Then another clean person had to come in because the first person was defiled in what they did. That another clean person was brought in to burn the sacrifice and everything had to be burned, even down to the the dung of the animal. And anyone who touched the animal was unclean. So then yet another person had to come in to gather up the ashes and take them away to a clean place. All of this together was to provide for a purification for sin. So we can see that sin being taken away was not a simple matter. This was complicated and it had to be done specifically and intentionally. Surely this was the lesson that those carrying out this sacrifice were, was to learn that sin was a serious matter yeah. it wasn't easy to take it away yeah. it had to be done specifically and and you a person that was clean had to do it Amen. so this and many of the other sacrifices that we read of they're full of spiritual parallels and imagery 
And if seen from the perspective of Jesus and his sacrifice and the salvation that is provided through it, these old covenant sacrifices can become rich reservoirs to, to learn from and to understand what Jesus did when he made himself a sacrifice for sin. So concerning this particular sacrifice of the red heifer, first we see that the animal was young. It, it had life in front of it. It was healthy. It was a perfect animal. It was full of life. It would likely have had a long, productive life. It would have been used for labor and um, bringing a lot of help to the person that would use it. If you had seen this animal, not knowing it had been slated for sacrifice, you might think that it had a long and healthy future. But that would have been, you would have been wrong <laughs> in assessing that because this sacrifice was intentional. This animal, no matter how healthy and lively it looked, when you were done with the sacrifice, it was, it was going to be dead and worthless, a pile of ashes. This sacrifice was to be costly. This wasn't just bring whatever you have, uh, whatever is weak, maybe sickly, something that's going to die anyway. God doesn't receive those kinds of, that, that's like a feigned service where you're just giving whatever you have. That's actually an offense to him when someone brings something that's lame and worthless to him. He expects to, to receive from us something that cost us something. A true sacrifice is when we give something that we considered to be valuable, something that we loved. In this sacrifice, it was a complete and total sacrifice. Everything about it was given to God. All of the strength of the animal, all of its utility, all of its youth and vigor, it was all forfeited for God alone. All its flesh, its skin, the inner parts, everything was God's. Nothing remained in the end but ashes, and even they were gathered up and taken away. You couldn't even use those to scatter your, on your field. And finally, the sacrifice had a defiling effect on anyone who touched it. It took a minimum of four individuals to carry out this one sacrifice because of the defilement. And in this, we can see how defiling sin is. At every every place that it has reached it has defiled Amen. Amen. so what can we conclude from these things sin starts out by appearing to be pleasant it looks like it's good we can see this in the example that we have with the fall of man all the way in the beginning it says that Eve looked at the fruit she saw that it was desirous to make one wise it was good for food um, so it, on the surface, it looks like it's lively and full of um, good things. But that is a lie. This is, this is what deception does. It Amen. makes you see things in a way that uh, is untrue. So when Adam and Eve took this fruit and ate it, they didn't realize what they were really holding in their hands that it was actually like bitter, poisonous ashes that was going to corrupt the whole world. While we held on to our sin, it seemed to be beautiful. We thought we were holding on to something that was really worth, some, worth something. And that we were tempted to hold more tightly to it when, it, when this was um, brought to our attention. But when we came to Jesus, when you see Jesus for who he really is, these things that we once held tightly to, they just fall away. That's right. Amen. When you look to him, he will show you the weight and burden of sin so that you'll want to be released from it. Amen. Those who refuse 
to let go of these things. It's as though they're sitting down, clinging to the ashes of this world, all the while oblivious to the treasure and the beautiful things that the Lord wants to give to them. It's as, th this is kind of a crazy thought, but imagine being imprisoned and loving the fetters that are binding your feet, or volunteering to build the walls higher and thicker. But this is actually what's going on because sin has a degenerative effect. It just continues to get worse and worse, yeah. and it's more difficult to get out of it the longer you're in it. Amen. But when we come to Jesus, <laughs> Having the realization that all we possessed are ashes, mourning, and the spirit of heaviness, we are met with mercy, and he gives us grace to be able to receive the beauty, the oil of joy, and the garment of praise. What a transaction. <laughs> what, a, what a blessing to be able to lay aside these things that are going to pass away anyway, yeah and to be able to receive such treasures. Amen. Amen. This is the good news, after all, that through the blood of Christ, we are free from sin. Amen. We don't have to hold on to these things anymore. Amen. We're free to just put them off Amen. and Amen. To, to leave them behind us. Amen. It's important to know that we're free from sin and to remember the futility of what we left behind us. Yeah. But we also want to be careful not to look too long at the ashes. Amen. Amen. Because if you look at the ashes too long, you're going to forget the reason why you left those things aside to begin with. It will pull you down. Our eyes have been opened to see Jesus, Amen. not to look at what we left behind. Amen. When you really see him, and you see his beauty, his glory, his might and strength, that enables you to rightly see everything. You're able to look at the darkness of this world and contrast it with the light of Christ and see that the light of Christ illuminates everything for you. You're able to see clearly and the purpose for that is that you'll make the right choice. Yeah, you'll choose to follow after the things that are of amen. God amen. and to, to continue. Like, like I had said earlier that salvation, it's a lifelong thing. This isn't something that you do once. Your whole life, you'll be able yeah. to recognize things that you once treasured and suddenly they've lost their luster. That's right. And that's an indication that it's time to put that thing aside. Unlike the priests who were defiled in the carrying out of the sacrifice, Jesus was not defiled in any way. Amen. And he was able to carry out the whole sacrifice himself. He didn't need anyone to help him to do this. Uh, the priests had to have several people, but not Jesus. He carried the weight of our sin on himself, and he succeeded in putting it away once and for all without being defiled by it. So now we can come to the Father with confidence that in Christ we will be accepted because Jesus made a way for us to be there. Amen. I'll have a word of prayer and then Sister Rachel is going to come and lead us in some more singing. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for the provision that you have made for us. Lord, we're here today because we love you and we want to to know more of you and we're eager to hear the things that you've prepared for us today lord we we pray that you would give us strength strength in our bodies and in our spirit that we would be able to receive the things and to keep them um, and to grow in our faith uh, because of the things that we've heard today we pray that you would be with each of the individuals who will be speaking today and those who will be uh, leading us in songs and reading scriptures. Lord, we know that you have orchestrated all of these things to blend together uh, so that it's uh, a feast that complements each other. 
Lord, we pray your continued blessing on our day, and we thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.